Hey everybody, it's Doodlebud here. I got this vial of 100 capillary tubes. I picked these up. These are actually used for blood collection. They even have a coating on the inside of here to help with uh, anticoagulation. Not doing any blood collection today. I am going to be doing some ink collection. To answer a question that it sort of drives me nuts when it comes to ink. Let me explain. Outside of the obvious thing like color, here we got blue, here we got black. There's a lot of other properties with ink. But one of them that we talk about that's kind of loose is wetness. Which ink is wetter than the other ink? And the standard test that we do is you fill a pen with ink. You do this on your bump your tripod while you're doing it. You scribble, 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 scribble. Put some ink on a page and then you wipe. And then we'll determine if I do the same test with another ink, ink A is drier or wetter than ink B. But there's a few problems with that and I don't think we're measuring the thing we actually want to measure. Now I've had these tubes actually for quite some time and I've been waiting to do the test for you guys because I got this little sample vial from Gold Spot, a Bernanke Blue, and I spilt a whole bunch so I hope I have enough to do it. But then I was also just recently sent this bottle of Noodler's X Feather and this came to me from Blesket. And the reason I needed these two inks is they are on the opposite side of the spectrum when it comes to surface tension. And that is something that these tubes very simply will measure. And so what I'm hoping to establish today is a very simple test that anyone can do at home. I think I picked these up for, I don't know, it's $5 or something silly, maybe $10 off AliExpress. And you can just dip these into the ink and then you can watch what happens. And then you'll be able to see right in front of your eyes if ink A is wetter or drier than ink B. But let's, before we start doing that testing, I got to explain a few things. So we have a few things to go through, but I'll try to make it quick for you. Think of viscosity as a liquid's ability to resist flow. Something like honey has high viscosity because it wouldn't flow down this ramp very quickly. Water has a lower viscosity because it flows down here quite nice. It's telling you about the internal friction inside that liquid. High friction, high viscosity. Then there's surface tension. This is more of, we've got all these little molecules in here. We also have molecules around on the outside, like a thin skin, a film around that droplet. Well, that's telling you the pull of all those molecules on that thin film that's on the outside. So if I try to deform this droplet of water or whatever the liquid is, if it's resisting being deformed, that means it has a high surface tension. Surface tension also tells you how well it interacts with other materials. So in the case of a fountain pen, we have a nib and we have a feed and we want that ink to flow along through those components. Well, how well does that ink interact with them? So there's something called adhesive forces and cohesive forces. The cohesive forces are the forces of the molecules within that ink. Adhesive forces are the forces it's facing outside of it. So with that surface, let's say maybe it's the feed or the nib. If the cohesive forces are too high, it's not going to interact very well with the other things, other materials. And then there's something called surface energy. All right, so when a droplet of ink interacts with a surface, well, this has some energy to it. And if the energy is high enough, it can pull that liquid into it. And that's something we're going to measure. It's called contact angle. <laughs> okay, and there's a lot of stuff, but we'll go through it. So you could have three different scenarios here. So here, let's say we have a droplet that's beating up. Like, let's say this is the, the hood of your car. You just waxed it and the water beads up, okay? Well, what happens is you reduced the surface energy, okay? So the cohesive forces are way stronger than the energy it's facing. Well, there's an angle of that water droplet you can measure from here to here. That's a high contact angle. That means it doesn't wet with that surface very well. Here's one that's wetted a little bit. It's now maybe a 90 degree angle, let's say. And one that's like fully wetted, um, this would be, you know, let, I don't know, let's say that's 10 degrees or 30 degrees or something like that. So the lower the contact angle means that liquid is wetting with that surface. That all has to do with the surface energy, the adhesive and cohesive forces going on. And that's what surface tension is all about. Let's just say you have a pen that seems to write dry, even though the nib is, seems tuned properly. Well, what you'd want to do is have an ink that's going to flow through this quite well. So you want one that's going to have a low surface tension. It wants to interact. The adhesive forces are greater and it's going to wet that surface because the contact angle gets quite low. You have to be careful in thinking that viscosity and surface tension are the same or they move in the same direction. That if you have a low viscosity, you have a low surface tension. That relationship can absolutely be true. 
but there's also ones that completely break that. Think of mercury. It has a fairly low viscosity. If you put it in your hand or whatever, it flows around quite well. Not quite as well as water, but it, it has no problem. Uh, it doesn't really resist flow. However, it has a mega high surface tension. You could like float lead on top of mercury. The other flip side of that, an example would be wood glue. It has a fairly high viscosity, right? Doesn't flow too quick, but the surface tension is very low. You want a low surface tension because you want that glue to penetrate into the wood. So we got to be careful in, th in conflating these terms and thinking they're one and the same. And if one's low, so will the other one. So to me, this is why I think measuring surface tension of ink would be the most valuable thing because we are really concerned about how well that ink will wet another surface. So this is why I thought these tubes could be a great, quick, easy tool that anyone can do to start measuring the wetness of an ink because there's a lot of variables. When you lay down this ink and do your smear test, it depends on what pen, how much you color it in, all those types of things. And then depending what paper you use, all that stuff, we want to sort of eliminate as many variables as we can and just leave it now. All the inks are going to interact with the exact same substrate, in this case, these uh, uh, capillary tubes. And I'll even try to put the same amount of volume of ink in here. Now, you can measure surface tension, okay? Essentially, what you do is you're going to dip it into your ink. Well, here, let me do it here real quick. Let me just show you. You dip it into your ink, but what you're supposed to do is just, sorry about the bump there, just touch the surface of the ink and it will dry in. And let me show you here real quick. So I'm going to put the tube into the ink here. I'll try to get the very top of the bottle. And it now draws up some of the ink. But the challenge is, depending how much ink is in there, you can't always see how far you dip it down. So that's a bit of a challenge. So what I'm going to do is put this ink in a little bit further. We'll let some of it come out a bit. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to dip this these tubes into all these different inks. I'll try to get the same height the same column of ink and then we'll watch how this ink interacts now within this tube we'll be able to see how well it flows how fast it moves and you can see here as well how much it wets the tube so as we compare the inks we'll be able to see the differences in these inks instantly and how well they perform between each other there is a proper formula and method you can use that if you just dip that ink in and how high of a column you get you measure that you got to measure that quite precisely that will now give you, you plug that into your formula and that can tell you the surface tension of the ink. But another thing you have to do, which would be absolutely impossible, is there will be a little tiny meniscus here between the ink and the edge. Sorry about the dirty fingernail. And uh, you got to measure the angle, that contact angle. And that is also gets plugged into the formula. Now that you need a, a special microscope set up in order to do that. So that's something not everyone can do. And the goal here isn't to give you the, the exact number of the surface tension we're going to measure. It's more to have a comparison from ink to ink. And so uh, what I'm going to do now is fill all these capillary tubes with ink from all the different ones I have. I'm going to show you the ones I'm dealing with. And then we're going to push these back and forth and just, we should be able to see results right away on how differently these inks interact with these tubes and how quickly and how freely the ink flows within it. Because at the end of the day, that's really what we're concerned about. How well is that ink going to flow through this pen, through, down, you know, through whatever, if you've got your barrel here or if you've got a converter, into the feed and out the nib and then onto the page. I figured I'd show you just how I'm preparing these. So if you want to try this at home yourself or just see how I'm doing this, I have a few of the samples all prepared. What I do is I take the capillary tube, dip it into the ink. Okay, so then I just wipe off the excess a little bit. Now what I want to do, I want this column of ink to be the same length on all of these. So I've compared all these so far, and as you can see, this is just way, way too much ink, way too long. So then I'll just take the tissue, and we'll just let it wick into the tissue a little bit, and then I'll go, I'll compare. I'm still a touch too long, just a little bit more. And now, yeah, I'm off a little bit. So I'll do this off camera and I'll get the columns all the same length. But that's how I'm preparing the samples. And here's a close-up so you can see I get the column of ink the same length inside of all the tubes. They're pretty darn close. So I had gathered all the samples. Let me run you through the inks I'm using. First, we have Bernacki Blue, then Diamine Writer's Blood, Iroshizuku Konpeki, very popular ink, simply Nuller's Black. Then we have this Pelican 4001 Royal Blue, followed by Waterman's, I always forget, this is the Mysterious Blue. And then we have Monteverde Smoke Noir, and finally, the Noodler's X Feather. Let me show you the difference already that I'm seeing between the two sides of the scale. We got the X Feather, 
and the Bernanke blue. Watch this. So I'm trying to get a white background so you can see this. We have Bernanke blue on the bottom and X feather on the top. And just look how quick <laughs> that ink on the bottom, that Bernanke blue moves. The X feather isn't even moving. It's Maybe I'll give it a little tap here. We can finally see a little bit of movement. I have to go essentially vertical with the tube. And now that ink is slowly, slowly moving along that tube. Just barely creeping along on there. Versus if you look at this ink, the Bernanke blue, this ink could be used as a level. And you can also see a huge difference with what happens inside the tube. You can see it's really coating that tube. Now these tubes are coated. It has a coating on there to help um, with anticoagulation for blood. But once it's coated, just look how quickly that ink moves. Let's show you some of the other ones so we can compare. So I have the inks all organized in the same fashion that they are there. If we start to move the inks around, we can start to see how how quickly they move and also how they start wetting these tubes. Now that Bernanke blue on the bottom there, you can see just the slightest angle and it starts to move. But above it is the uh, Diamine Writer's Blood. And you can see just how much it wets that capillary tube there and how quickly it flows. And here come the other ones. You got to almost get them up 90 degrees on camera. This is impossible to show. But you can see just how much more of an angle you need in order to make those inks flow. And that X feather on the far end there is still just, just hanging out, not really moving anywhere. But see that writer's blood, it's quite wet. The Orochizuku above it, that's the blue one above the red, moves pretty quick. But that Bernanke blue on the bottom there is just so sensitive. This is almost a level, the slightest change in angle, and that thing moves. But it is interesting to see some of these inks leave behind some residue, which means it re it's really, really wetting the, the uh, capillary tube there. And that's also going to help it with flow, because if it now can join up with the other molecules that are left behind, it's those cohesive forces that can help pull that ink along. And you can see that uh, Bernanke blue, it really wets. So of course, it's just going to flow right along and just connect up with all the other ink molecules in there. It leaves sort of the one of the darkest residues behind. But it's a very interesting property ink. So not only we can see how fast they're moving, but oops, there we lost one. We can see how quickly, uh, sorry, the angle required in order to get these inks to move. So why is it that this Bernanke blue ink would flow so easily in that tube compared to the Noodler's X feather. Well, let's go back to the surface tension that we were talking about earlier. What I'm gonna to try to do now very carefully is get a little drop of each ink on the end of these tubes, put them on here, give it a second, and then I'll wipe, and you'll see this absorbs in really quick, this doesn't. This is a very wet ink, it flows like crazy, this one doesn't, but we'll get completely different and sort of false readings. So here goes nothing on camera. Let's see if we can get these little drops on here. Oh, I got that one on there. Let me do this. Shoot. All right, let's try this again. Okay, I think I think I have it this time. So let's put a drop here and a drop there. We'll give it just a quick second. And you can see, look how much more of a smear we got from the X feather. And this ink is already dry in here. This stuff is still smudging a little bit. That's where these uh, smear tests can be a little bit confusing. One, because you can have different pens and different gear. But the surface tension can change it drastically. This X feather has high surface tension, right? It's not absorbing into the page as quick. It has high cohesive forces. So it's going to stay like this, right? And it's greater than the adhesive forces. Eventually it does, you know, soak into the page. They do overcome that. But this one is the total opposite. The cohesive forces are lower. So these adhesive forces take over much quicker and soak into the page very fast. So if I just let those drops sit for maybe three seconds, that's all this ink needs to penetrate into this paper versus this will take quite some time. So you might wipe them and go, oh, this is a dry ink, this is a wet ink, but it actually is completely the opposite. So while this test isn't exactly perfect, this is just my first go, I am starting to get the results I was expecting. You can get two inks here, and I got an air bubble in it now, of course, that I'm trying to shoot this. It is giving us some details. And one, you can see how well it's coating the tube. So that's going to tell us about its wettability. 
and then also just how quickly it moves inside of it and the minimum angle required in order to get that ink to move. That's some valuable information to let us know which ink is wetter and maybe a little bit on ink selection for certain pens if you're having some trouble. Now look, this was just a first test. I did one tube per ink. That is not, not the way you do it. I should probably do 10 samples with every single ink and even all sorts of inks. And then, you know, I have a spreadsheet with all the data, but I honestly just do not have enough time to do that. If this was my full-time gig, I, I would totally do that test, but this is, I got a few hours here and there to do this with. But I'll leave a link in the description so anyone interested, if someone wants to do all the testing, hey, good on you for the contribution if you did that. But normally, you know, if you're trying to find an ink that's a little bit more wet, maybe you have a flex pen and you want to use a wetter ink, it's either hit up Reddit and put the question and get tons of answers, or you can look around on different sites where they've sort of done those tests. But again, there's there's just so many variables. I think this, we're on to something. This isn't conclusive. I don't have all the data, but this at least confirmed how the inks should be handling and how they should vary. The drier inks were moving slower. The wetter inks were moving quicker, and they also needed a shallower angle angle in order for them to move and then also too when you see what happens to the ink inside of this tube this is telling us a lot of the story as well and it's a very visual thing i suppose if i really wanted i could make one i guess i could 3d print one but i could have a fixture where you put your tube in there and then you move the tube and at the end there it'll tell you the angle that is required. So the angle that you reach before it starts moving, that would be probably a very valuable test to do. So then you could have a standardized number to say how wet ink A is versus ink B versus right now, there's sort of like an inkometer and there'll be a random scale here from dry to wet. And then users will assign it a value somewhere over here or somewhere over here. And on some places, they just take the average. So if there is, I don't know, 100 votes that people assign a wetness to it, and there's quite a large range, but the average is here, we'll call that a dry ink. Or if the average is over here, we'll call it a wet one. But as I showed you, there's a lot of variables. So I think this is at least a step in the right direction. It's very, uh, you know, low cost to pick these up. And it's a test that really anyone can do. And Although you might not get a very accurate number from user to user, you could very quickly comparatively test two inks. So if you're having trouble with inks, you can prepare a couple samples and then see what's happening to the inks as they're inside of these tubes. I want to thank everybody for watching and, uh, you know, hit the subscribe button if you haven't done that yet. And to all those folks watching this who know way more about this topic than I do, which I really... I don't know anything. I just randomly got this idea one night of a way to test wetness. This somehow popped into my mind. So I ordered them and I started thinking about, well, maybe this, I could be onto something. Maybe I'm not. This could be completely wrong and I've got false flags all over the place. So I'd love to hear from you down there in the comments, uh, some critique, some criticism or some input on whether this test is valid whatsoever, if it's useful or if, uh, if I, this is a waste of time. So anyways, We'll leave it there and we'll catch you next time.